is in the pursuit of joy. And not drown myself with the, the song. I hope you're. Yeah, I had a great weekend. It was a um, very interesting weekend for me. But it is Monday, and starting off on a uh, new adventure, and um, and I wanted to focus. I wanted to do the. Um, the one episode about I've been preparing um, on Chinese metaphysics and that kind of fizzled a little bit because I, I really want to make sure I had um, all my proper notes with me and I, I want to be able to explain uh, some concepts about metaphysics that may be a little bit um, difficult to understand, you know, on uh, on the face of it. They really are not, but uh, just to be able to get... Uh, the information lined up the way I wanted it, so that at least it's 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 easier um, for me to deliver something that I've been practicing. But I I also want to make sure that I explained it properly. So um, ho- hopefully, pretty soon I'll have that um, ready to go. But um, I was um, being minded uh, recently because uh, I was thinking about travel and how travel as therapy is something that I was the uh, um, espousing at the beginning of this year, and uh, it seems like it was yesterday that I started um, this podcast. Uh, it goes back to February. I thought I didn't start until uh, later on in the in the springtime, and I had lost track. And um, I, I I recall I'm recalling by thinking about Dr. Um, Wayne Dyer, who who had when. At some point in his life, he was diagnosed with, uh, he, he was a health nut. I don't want to call him a nut because um, I think he um, he was a great person, but that he he was big into fitness and meditation and yoga and all that, uh, all, all things that w- most pe- reasonable people would uh, think would lead to great health and the lack of um, disease. And then he was uh, diagnosed with cancer and the initial reaction was like, you know, I don't do, I don't do lymphoma. That's not something that I do because he wasn't programmed to really grasp, grasp that concept that he, he was diagnosed with cancer. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole story about how he healed himself, but uh, um, I was thinking about this week about how we, we can heal ourselves from a lot of stuff, but that stress has been found to be the, the big culprit in, not caught, not just causing, but creating disease in our bodies, and that probably also affects the mind because the mind gets gets um, our minds get sick. We don't sometimes act the way we should, um, and I talk about uh, our, our conditioning, mental conditioning, and self image, and our programming uh, a lot. And that that is also the mind, body, and mind connection can simply not be ignored. So what we're thinking a lot of times ends up manifesting, and you know, I also talk about manifestation, and one way to manifest something is it's, uh, it's good health or bad health. You, you, you can have a choice. Um, and in his case, he, I, I guess he couldn't figure out where, where the disease came from. Like I said, he did survive that. He did not survive life. You know, we don't get to survive life. Uh, he died at uh, age 74, I think. I think he had heart trouble, too, um, and no one really actually explained after he passed away um, what the cause was that I know of. I've, I've looked, and, um, and and no matter, he, he lived his life, thankfully, uh, to a certain stage in his life where he li- actually, let me back up a little bit, he, he lived with a lot of anger, and anger goes hand in hand with fear as well. We, we, we're afraid to love or to be loved, and we were hanging on to bad stuff for a long time, and that kind of festers in our bodies. And um, he came from a place like that where he was always angry. And um, he, d- he, d- he did talk extensively about how he, he, he overcame that anger, and then he started to go into a healing phase, and then he started to go into more enlightening um, mindset. And that's he. That's why you you hear about him being, you know, a, a you know self made guru of uh, self improvement and all that. And but he wasn't always that way. He was he was the always the, the the one person he was always hanging on to anger. I think he said something about drinking as well. I don't recall all of it. Um, but he was just angry. He had father issues, and he he had to find a, a moment 
in his life where he actually had to break away from the bad habits, bad behaviors, and transition into something better. And he lived to be 75. Uh, I think the quality of his life was improved. And, and in fact, that, that he had some some health issues and those he overcame. And we do not overcome death. When it's time to when it's time to check out, it is time to check out. I don't I don't no longer question that. And if you follow me from last week's, uh, um, well, actually it was Sunday. I, I think I made a mistake and uploaded it not on uh, not on Monday, but on Sunday, um, the previous podcast. On during Queen Elizabeth's um, uh, day long uh, procession, you know, funeral procession and all that, got me thinking about my mother and uh, the struggles she she went through on her way out, and how I was um, a part of um, her send off. I was very much linked to that spiritually and physically to what was happening to her, um, and what I, kind of kind of what I got from it. He talks about the about that dream, that vision that I had when she came to me, and I never heard from her again. So uh, there's so much more for us. So um, and Dyer has his book. Um, every every problem can, has a uh, spiritual solution. I have it with me. I'm not going to quote from it. It's a great book. I have to read it over. Um, it, it's starting to get me to think about that during the Queen's funeral and thinking about my mom and um, how we. How we live life, it, it, it's it's gonna. I think it's gonna determine how we're gonna go out. But the saying, um, I, I cannot attribute it to to anyone uh, right off the bat. But um, that I've heard many times saying people that people don't die, they kill themselves, and this is so true. We we tend to embrace wholeheartedly, um, even violently sometimes to the things we cherish the most. You know the things we believe are. Uh, non-negotiables in life, the things that we believe as, as as truth, and then turn out to be not so truth, and and it's making us sick and it's making us die, die slowly and painfully. And the other saying that I've I've, I've mentioned before is, uh, and I don't attribute these to my, to me at all, but they're they're great. They they exemplify what I'm talking about. That we uh, we are what we think is that we, the people, most people, they tiptoe through life just so they can make it to death safely. Um, that should not be a goal. And if so, for some of us, if we're here just for a period of time, this for this one life, and it's going to be a big rotation, a long time before we come back, and we can challenge ourselves. And if we are, you know, beings of light, we are not something that's physical. <coughs> Pardon me then we're wasting we're wasting this tour of duty here and the way i see it it's something that in my estimation we we choose to be here and and how long we're going to be here huh? it, it could change like i said in two episodes ago on, about the pinch it, it it's such a small adjustment on what we do they can you can be on the brink of uh, a great success and make that slight adjustment, you know, out of fear, and and not having faith, and not having the consistency of, to see your your plans through, and totally derail what you're doing, and not know exactly what where did I go wrong? Everything was in place, but we made one small adjustment, and that involved fear. But if we make one more one more adjustment that involves confidence and 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 self love, and 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 just knowing, having that awareness that we can accomplish what we're engaging in then it, it it will push us through it will go it will push us through that stage and into the next one and um so um i decided to go back and uh, some of my reading um, um not just Wayne Dyer but also uh, uh Joe Dispenza and he's uh, he he overcame he healed, he's he healed himself from a really uh, life-threatening uh, injuries that they're told in his books but he he does counseling and all that and um I've, I've been exposed to some of his material uh, i have not studied with him directly or uh, actually enrolled in his courses but um i do have his books um, i'm well aware that he talks more about brain science and how our programming is really what uh, gets in the way of our happiness and um I introduced earlier this year when I started I started to go on cruises when I I decided I wanted to, to retrain myself as a travel agent and I'm I'm going back to that um I just didn't like um uh, 
uh, in particular how I was in relation working in relationship to the host agency. They're not doing anything wrong. It's just that I I wanted uh, I wanted something more from the experience than I didn't think I was getting, and um, so I I haven't been active uh, actively uh, booking travel. Um, I know it's hurricane season. I'll, I'll get to, I'm going to talk about travel here shortly uh, because I'm leading into that. And one of the things that I used that that other therapists use is um, when you're, I named this episode Stress Less, Live More, is that we, we are just really tiptoeing through life. We just add more stress and we worry about things we don't need to worry about or hang on to things that are really killing us slowly and not really adding years to our lives um, and removing ourselves sometimes from the environment that we're in can be so beneficial in that it just you just get a little bit of a um, a little bit of um, energy injected in our, into our, our minds and bodies um, where it's rejuvenating it could just be a, a, a walk to you can drive to a, if you have an arboretum or something like that in your town or um, I know someone who who likes cemeteries. I like cemeteries, but there's some cemeteries there are the historical ones in in your town. They may have a a, a beautiful garden. It's well maintained, and it, these places are so peaceful. I, I'm I'm never afraid to go to you know. I don't whistle past the graveyard. Is what I'm saying. Uh, but some are so well maintained that it's just you just have to be in awe of the beauty of the design of the place and how well they're they're cared for. And uh, a cruise was something I had never done. And not that I have never been on a ship, but um, it was that I kind of thought that from a perspective of someone in the military, I did not want to be on a ship uh, for a variety of reasons. Just I just that I made up on my own uh, and others and other reasons for not cruising came mainly from uh, feeding from media, being allowed to be influenced by by opinions or stories that I, that I found on uh, and the news and so forth. And I, I came from a security background for a long time. And um, I, I always looked at things from a hyperactive mind and that uh, while there's risk in everything, uh, we can get on a flight and, you know, just not not get to where we're going. Uh, we can get in our cars and not get to where we're going. We can, we can not wake up someday. And that's when, you know, our time expires. So um, the inability or reluctance to embrace some risk in order to live is, is what keeps us from getting, uh, from achieving that great health. And, um, and there have been many cases where, uh, if you even look it up, how removing, how taking a vacation recently in the news, actually, but it was a good story where, uh, just, just taking a couple of days off can, can actually help, help someone, um, not just feel better, but look better. It's just simply an environmental, uh, exchange. Uh, you can go on a staycation. You can go like two counties over. I, I would go to another state. Just drive and, and just get the nicest hotel that you can afford and, and stay there for the weekend. Make it Friday and then come back Sunday night. Go back to work on Monday. Start your week uh, on, on a really positive start. Um, and, you know, somebody tells you at work, what did you do this weekend? You know, sometimes you just kind of sit at home and, and, and your favorite activity is just to watch TV and the things you don't get to do during the week. If that brings you joy, you should do it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm advocating for going outside of the norm and trying something new. Um, There's one thing that uh, the national parks have uh, lotteries, and they're tough. I've, I've, I've not been able to secure tickets for some of these activities, but there are some parks in uh, up by Tennessee or is it Kentucky where they have the uh, the fireflies and they do their mating thing each year and it's it's kind of iffy as to kind of how they calculate when they're going to do this. Uh, then not asking anyone permission to you know to court each other so they can reproduce. And they they just cover an entire forest or countryside with their light shows of you know they're talking to each other and engaging in their mating rituals and and um, there's a uh, uh, the national parks have a, um, they have a lottery and you can enter and you can pay like a dollar. Uh, so you don't get your ticket. You don't win that lottery that you lose that do- dollar. But then if you do get selected, uh, then you pay that full price for that ticket. <coughs> Pardon me again. Um, and um, I, I was bidding hard for that one because I really wanted to see that. So there, there are activities that, and they may not, you can plan ahead though. Um, 
But like for these lotteries that sadly you can, you cannot do it like a year ahead of time because it's going to happen anyway. They only open up the sales, um, and the lottery actually like, um, maybe a month out prior to the event, to the opening of these parks or whatever, uh, the activity is, but you can look for some activities that don't take as much effort, um, Camping. I mean, I've been in Virginia, Maryland, and West Virginia. There's plenty of uh, hiking going on and antiquing. Just, just reconnect them with the uh, history or nature. Just going for walks. And and fall just started officially this past weekend, and the temperature starting to to match the time of year. Um, for where I've been living for many years, uh, the fall usually kind of a um, it doesn't last long, and it goes straight. Sometimes it goes straight into winter, and uh, but so far it's, it's nice. It's a little overcast, and that bright sun is trying to. Um, it's still shining. We're not getting as much rain. We did get, get a lot of rain in the past couple of weeks, just really torrential rains, and then it shifted away from that into um, just really uh, plain hot days, clear skies, and now we're just getting. Uh, it's back into the sixties. And it's really nice. Uh, in some places, people come out and watch the leaves turn. You, you should probably, if you are in an area where that happens, to plan any activity. Just pick something local and just go out. Even if you come home and you don't want to spend the money uh, on a hotel just to be over the weekend uh, at the particular area, just just take a, a nice long drive and then just, just go into a town you've never been to before and just explore a little bit. And just just connect to new things and re- refresh the good things that you have with you before you come home and start a new week. And this should be practiced frequently, not just like once a month. Maybe if that's the only time you can do it, then that's great. But um, not to allow ourselves to, to build negative energy for so long that um, only when something triggers us and to walk in a way, that's when we do it. Um, and I've, I'm, I've been guilty of that. Like, I just need a break, and I, I should have passed that. I should have stopped before the break, before I had a need for the break. You should always strive to to find something fun to do just for you before you feel a great need to get away. When you start to feel kind of like a like caged feeling, like, you know, like a cabin fever, that you need to do something for yourself, you should do it before you get the urge then you'll know you'll be aligning your 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 mind to to what what it needs you just you just get you had you just have to learn to time it a little bit and um and going back to my cruises i i i knew for a fact that i had been plagued with uh, some health issues for a while now uh, stemming from the job that i had the the one that i was let go from it was a it was 100% set and sedentary and i had developed um um, some itchy in my lower legs, and I worked around computers and other on the machines, and um, and it was kind of hot on the desk because the machines were on the floor, and I don't know why anyone would put computers on the floor because you know they get dusty and all that. But I, I don't do the work, I don't do the IT setups, and uh, that heat was generating uh, uh, some symptoms that just sitting there, and sometimes you had to get up and and stretch, but it, it was a sedentary. Um, static position where you couldn't just get up and leave at any moment. You had to tell somebody else you had to leave for a little bit and to stretch one's legs, but it just wasn't enough. When you're doing 12 hours of that, um, the body does not really like not being able to move. And I developed uh, some issues with my veins and the lower legs that require surgery. And I still, nobody really cared. I, I came to work with bandages on my legs First of all, they did one leg first where they had to collapse a big vein and they had to reroute the, um, the, where the blood went. And the body does that on its own. And so it could, I'm um, a little bit of a year post up. And it was totally, it's ambulatory surgery per se, but I still went to work. I didn't miss a day. And technically, I could have just taken a day off. But like I said, I said, I'm going to get this procedure done. And nobody really even batted an eye, like, okay, can you come to work? Or no, nothing. So I I knew that when I was when I was let go in January I was happy I was happy that um, you know that old saying especially if you work for government like you know I keep show, they keep throwing money at me so I keep showing up I was in that stage I I, I keep saying it over and over last year was the year that I, I was planning on bailing out and I didn't do it and then I kind of um, 
I slacked off and I got all these, uh, I had headaches, I had massive headaches and I had bouts of anger and I, a lot of that was internalized. Sometimes it came blowing up at the wrong times, at the wrong people. And it, it just manifests itself in such a way. And I, I pretty much, you we're digging our own graves, just, just very methodically doing, just killing ourselves. And when I was thinking about uh, Wayne Dyer, it got me to think about another person that he was good friends with, um, who, who technically died in 2006. Um, well, she went into a coma because she had been fighting uh, lymphoma. They had taken over pretty much entire body. She was reduced to like 83 pounds. And she, her lungs were filled with uh, fluid and she needed uh, oxygen all the time. And basically, uh, basically she's just sitting around waiting to die. And, um, and this, this individual now, of course, teaches, um, has her own school and she's, she's an inspiration to other people. But initially she, she had what she describes in that coma as uh, that was going to be her final day, basically, according to the doctors, there's no turning back. And she had an out of body experience. And um, out of body and near death, and where she, everything was much peaceful, and she she had she felt that she had she she explains it really well. If you just look her up, I'll give you her name here in a moment. She has she has books out, and like I said, she teaches the how um, how we can love ourselves and just improve our lives, just not by worrying so much. And she lived her life of fear. I was afraid of not pleasing people, uh, not saying the right things, not eating the right foods. Uh, she was afraid of getting sick. Um, she ended up eating sick, very sick. And she, when she she had the experience, she she talks about and um, and that she she knows everything that was going on in the hospital, even outside of the hospital, uh, family members outside of the country in another country. Uh, she she knew what her, her sibling was 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 going through. Uh, she she had a connection with uh, dead relatives, so she explains this whole thing. And whether you you are keen on believing this stuff or not, um, uh, keep keep an open mind because she does survive being in a coma. Um, she didn't lose any of her faculties or anything like that. Um, I mean, she's just basically her 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 body was simply shutting down from the cancer overtaking her, and um, and it started with a lump. A neck is what she said, and then just kind of spread out the lymph nodes, and you know that they, you know once you get things into your lymph lymphatic system, it's it, it spells trouble. But she survived for four years to the point where she was basically you know reduced to nothing. And when she she had a greater understanding from that experience, so when she woke up from the coma, it was totally unexpected. And within she said she was going to be okay. She knew why she had been sick with cancer. And she, she was, she was told basically she was going to be able to live out her rest of her life to rectify that. And within five weeks, she was, uh, uh, she they started to, to go away. A lot of the symptoms, the, the, um, the basic physical manifestations of cancer started to go away within a day from her waking. And after five weeks, she was discharged from the hospital. I have watched her on video with Wayne Dyer when he had her, um, um, you can find her on, um, a Ted, there, there are Ted talks that he, she does on YouTube. You can find a shortened one, but I've seen her uh, in one of Dwy uh, Dyer's uh, 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 programming lectures. So in seminars she's done over the years, and she she talked about how the doctors were were uh, almost on the verge of just forcing her to stay in the hospital or come back in because they could not find anything wrong with her. There, there was just no proof that it went from a she was just just teeming with cancer for four years leading into what we everybody thought was going to be here you know her her death was imminent to waking up from a coma and within days and weeks she's completely cancer free and she has been uh, cancer free since and that was in 2006 and um her her name is uh anita morjani it's uh, m double o R J A N I, and she has a book, uh, uh, "Dying to Be Me," and um, it's um, it's quite it's quite an experience to listen to her explain what she saw the other and the other side, and um, so the, the the connection with how we worry ourselves sick. You know, you've heard that expression. I'm pretty sure you worry yourself. You're gonna worry yourself sick. 
Yeah, you worry and yourself sick. Um, in the case of my mother, people kill themselves. They worry sick about their kids, um, uh, about their jobs, about what the neighbors might think, about uh, you know what what's going on at the church. It's just things that really don't have any impact uh, on on our on our, on us unless we give them power. And um, if you 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 a lot of money, you're gonna worry that there's not enough. And and rather than switch and and focus on the things that we have the most out of that are good, we we end up embracing negativity. And um, and she suffered from a lot of that. And the um, the case of um, Anita Morjani is that when she came back, she was she was she kind of felt she explains that in plain English that she felt that, you know, I, I could use, I could totally not go back into that body because there's not much left of it. I, she said if she had a choice, she was not going to come back. And she was given some sort of understanding in whatever realms she was existing at the time and whatever it is that we come from, from people that were relatives that were dead long gone, but they were, were with her to give her an understanding that you, it's okay. You can go back. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. You just had to know what what the causes were for her to um, to be so sick, so desperately sick. And like I said, when she came back back to, she explained to everyone that she was going to be okay. She knew she knew exactly why she was sick, and it, it was a total mind mind check. Her her mind had to completely change in that regard. That she had to believe what she saw with spiritual eyes would actually materialize in the physical world. So good health is something that she had to obviously embrace and, and, and manifest all over again. So surely she looks good in video. And she, she's pretty healthy. She, she lectures, she teaches. I think she, she does uh, uh, seminars and things like that, or retreats. And uh, she works with people in helping them uh, heal and I I wanted to to start doing the same thing for myself and and to help others and and come January February I started with the cruise and the idea of the cruise to go back to the travel part of it not that kind of travel out of your body but I mean I mean some people do return some don't um, and I say that a little bit tongue in cheek because uh, I've been around death a lot so it doesn't really phase me that much but living is the hardest part and living a good life and then not living with such regrets all the time that we hang on to to guilt and it, it renders us powerless because um, every mistake we've ever made it's uh, it can be attributed to to our lack of success in the future and that's not true is our hanging on to them to the guilt of not having acted properly or not doing enough or always being afraid to to press on to move forward and learn new things, learn from the experience um, of having made mistakes. That's what holds us back. And just just plotting yourself uh, a time just just to be alone, um, to reflect and just enjoy just uh, enjoy the beauty of uh, traveling someplace that's not close to home, or it could be close to home, two two counties over. And if you see something that's exciting in, in the newspaper or or a travel guide, uh, consider it. Just consider removing yourself from from where you are. And your home may not be the source of your stress. It could be work, but it could be a couple of days. And if you have time accumulated, um, a lot of people I know, they accumulate the paid time off like it's, uh, like it's a badge of honor. I got 80 some odd hours. I did. I had my last job. And let me tell you, I tell you I have both legs operated on for, for my uh, lower legs. I had veins collapsed. That cost money. I mean, I had insurance and all that, but some came out of my pocket, and I had to recover. I had to wear bandages and, you know, granny, you know, compression socks and all that, all the way to up to my thigh. Uh, and then I can only get one leg operated at a time because that's, that's how they do it with insurance. They, they can't just, just hit you up, you know, two treatments back to back, you know, same legs at the same time. I had to wait two weeks between legs, so it was not easy. And then I could not exercise. I couldn't even get in the swimming pool. And that, if, I, if you've listened to me for months, you know how much I love uh, swimming. One of these days I'm going to do nothing about swimming, tell you about uh, the transformation from being a swim, from non-swimmer to being a swimmer. And this is during that kind of like stage when I was getting really good at swimming. 
And I said, not even on that beach? Because you got to be kidding me. Oh, you can't even get on a flight right now. I couldn't even uh, fly someplace. Um, and that was frustrating, but I had to get it done. And having that sedentary job that I really disliked so much, I mean, I couldn't grow there. And I talked myself into believing, not following my own advice, that I, I there's nothing else out there for me. And that wasn't true. So I went through this this period of time for a few months after that where I, I just didn't have to show up someplace to get paid for it. I had little money. Um, the company was actually gracious. Project manager, she was gracious, and they I actually allowed some little severance, two weeks paid, paid vacation on top of whatever I had accumulated. The previous six months, I had accumulated about 169 hours of paid time off. Clearly, I could have been someplace because it's paid. And just the excuse that, well, I don't have enough money. Uh, you know, I, I, think I, I think I had enough for the plane ticket, but no place. I had a vehicle. All I had to do was just drive and get a hotel. And uh, I'm not cheap. I keep saying that. Like when I buy things, I, sometimes I, I squirm at price. And I should have uh, taken time off to, to just live because I wasn't doing any living at the job. And so when I was let go, I was very happy. I was, uh, you can hear, you can go back to those first ones like it was in a dream, dream world. Like, I mean, I've let go, but I did not react to it in a negative way. I, I, I knew that I would be something better and more fun out there for me to do. And going to a job every day, it's, it's a way of making a living, but it's not the only way. So if anybody tells you, well, it's the only way is to, to, to earn money to, is to work. Okay, but I might bring in value to that job. If I will no longer bring in value, and it's not giving me value either, then that, that relationship should have been severed a long time ago. I put up with it for four years. So completely my fault. It doesn't matter what was going on at the workplace. Uh, I, I had the power to walk away, and I chose not to. I, I, got, I, I slacked. I figured, well, I'm just going to kick it into 2022. You know, This is the thing that I was supposed to be working with and making my escape plan and I had all these ideas in my head and I, I, I they stayed in the and the fantasy stage to be honest I only got so far never made it really into the real world because I never manifested but the one thing that the universe brought to me was the one thing I wanted the most was to not be there anymore and it did come January and it click and just click click and just like a cl- it's like a clock the universe clock and it just went in and I find myself in that lane, and I took it well, you know, graciously. But I had to figure out what I was going to do because, and I want to bring in the metaphysics the next time pretty soon because uh, it had to do with a, uh, with a life chart reading, and I, I just got a, got this bug in my ear about how this this is this is going to be a year where I'm going to have no no auspicious stars. Basically, all the breaks that I got last year, they were totally wasted. <laughs> If I was going to bail out of that job I hated, I had health issues. Like I said, my eggs, my legs were itching. And it went from itching into open sores because I was scratching in my sleep and I had to wear long socks for my calves, not for the whole leg. But it was manifesting in the lower legs. And I had some scars from that. I never, And I never thought that my skin would ever heal. Ever. Because it was so unsightly. I couldn't even wear pantyhose and dress to work. I said, I don't even want to look at my legs. Like, I just don't want to look. I just want to. Uh, and they were heat sensitive, too. Like, I'd go swimming after the procedure. And before the procedure, I'd go swimming. And my and my legs were actually, um, uh, I don't know if I talked about how I like the, the steam room at the, at the club. And to, to detox a little bit between workouts. And I, I, it was, the skin was so sensitive to the touch that it was frail and and it was heat sensitive. I couldn't be in there at all. If I had to shower, it had to be a tippet water. Um, the, the skin was that damaged. And I really thought I was going to be in big, big trouble. And I went ahead and broke down and had, had the procedure done. And I haven't had a single problem with my legs. So, I mean, I, I, where I work now, I'm, I'm standing all the time. It's complete opposite. I did not want to be in a sedentary job. That may have to come to an end pretty soon because I've already... It's I've gone to the point where I've mastered it. It's nothing. There's nothing to grow from there. But um, it's like working out for 40 hours a week straight without a break. It's been great. Uh, um, I've gone through physical transformation. 
you know, um, that I'm, I can probably talk about later on. And I, I wanted to help me to, you know, kind of get into that, that physical state that I need to be in. But the job actually brought health problems. And just being sick, sick and tired of being there, I'm always dreaming, I just need to get away. And I had 169 hours. I sold back. I actually, I, I cashed in. I got money for, for that um, added to my paycheck because I just took the money. And I should have taken some money, and that they should, should have taken some time off with that money with all those hours they had accumulated. That means I took no time off. I, I got no kudos for it. I got no pat on the back, no pay raises, um, not appreciation for anything. I just, I know the body, part of the furniture, and that's not a good existence. So you, you, we all know when we need to extricate ourselves from a bad situation, when you become part of the furniture. You expect it to be there. And and so yes, I I was saying a lot. You know, I don't I don't work for money anymore. It's true. I don't have to fill a a mindless task that somebody else can learn in a few weeks. And pretty much, you know, they're not special as I am, but they are as special as they are, and they will perform to whatever standard uh, is required of them. It's pretty finite. That was pretty finite position. And I need I needed to be someplace where I could not just shine but someplace where I could be creative and just really grow and expand. And I, it was not happening there. So, yes, I, I admit I, I enjoy not going back in there to be thrown money at me and um, and just show up and sit and have my legs rot from under me. And um, I had issues with my gallbladder also. I was not eating well. Even though I was exercising and it, it, I could feel... Uh, a swollen gallbladder, and I don't know how to describe that to you, but if you're sitting for 12 hours, uh, you feel the gallbladder just just pressing against the rib cage. I I was not well, and all I had to do was just not be there anymore. A week after that, I'm just like you know, I just had to go to. It was it was rain. It was bad weather. It was snowing, and that weekend was a holiday weekend, and I loved it. I said I don't have to be at that job. I don't I don't have to be there. I can I can breathe. I can just breathe again. And I started to feel some joy because it's not, well, I'm assuming I'm going to run out of money and I'm going to figure out how I'm going to, how I'm going to support myself. The, these things do come with time. And I've been building some things for myself to generate my own economy, which is another way, something you can do as well. And I kind of be laughed at. Some people took me seriously and I did spearhead some projects and they, they took hold, but, um, uh, there were some attitude changes that I had to make and that I didn't make in time, and, and um, I, I just I, I needed to reconfigure everything. That doesn't mean those um, those dreams um, have died. Um, I, I planted seeds, and I'm still planting seeds, and I'm nurturing them. Um, but if you see someone that they're working to create their own economy uh, and don't and uh, they're not making money right away, that's not something to be laughed at, because in some time it's going to kick. And then that's the same person who was laughing at them. The one person's going to realize, wait a minute, <coughs> all that fussing about the stuff, it, it paid off eventually. And you never know what the potential is, and you never know how that person will grow. And I kind of laugh back at people who just kind of uh, raise their eyebrows at me because um, some things will change at some point, and I know it's, it's going to pay off. So I'm, I can be pretty patient when I want to be. But I, I wanted to to share that with you because uh, it's my health started with my mind not being there anymore it didn't matter anymore over time it's just like yeah I know that was the thing that was bothering me months ago and I tolerated it for four years and and just like Anita Morjani's cancer spread over four years it wouldn't go away uh, we live in, in anger and fear and like I said they go hand in hand we, we're afraid to, to, to take risk and live even though that's the whole point, is taking the risk and then getting, getting a growing spurt out of it. When we don't take a risk, we don't grow. And we just, we just, we don't, we don't just suffer and just become, just shriveled up, you know, disease, you know, bag of bones and whatever is left over. And in her case, she, she woke up to that reality. She had to actually had to see it. Let's just say from an outsider's, I'm, I'm not saying this tongue-in-cheek, again, I'm not being sarcastic, but it's from the outside. If you were to observe your own body and your own life and in the physical plane as an objective 
you know, observer. Just figure out, no, I inhabited that body for X amount of years. I, I, do I have to go back to that? You don't have to go back to that. I, I think we have a choice. Some people come back. Or some people just don't come back. It's like, no, I, I think I'm going to clock out now. It's like, I, I think I've, I've done enough. This is beyond the scope of my ability for some reason. But um, ma- ma- mainly the health issues that are reported in research that creep up when you have a lot of stress, they, they have a lot to do with sleep which restores a lot of all the systems in my body and the brain, not just the brain, but every, all the organs. Um, digestion, I've had digestion problems that like incredible, just crazy. And um, rashes, I, I suffer from rashes. And before I, I, I wrap this up tonight, and I keep going back in circles about retreats and um, weekend hikes and things like that, the, the cruises actually was, were actually experiments and I know I got I got some perks for book and travel, you know, and all that. And I got heavily discounted stuff. And I actually got the cruise for free this summer. Uh, I was much appreciative for the opportunity um, because normally I wouldn't have gifted myself that. Not because I don't deserve to have it. I've, I've taken vacations before and all that and travel, you know, all over the world. Well, pretty much all over the world. I still haven't gone to Africa um, or South America. But... Um, Actually, I haven't been to a lot of countries, but at any rate, it gave me an opportunity to explore and, and to just relax and to actually observe other places and other people and how they work and how they communicate and how they work with their own environment. Uh, Alaska was a big eye opener. I, I loved Alaska. I can I can spend hours talking about Alaska. Maybe I will talk a little bit later next time. And what I'm going to leave you with this this evening is that uh, give yourself a break. Look at how much time you've accumulated that's paid. Because I just did. I just took two back-to-back days off. And I'm like, wow. Uh, I'm so happy that I could actually do that at short notice. And it was night and day. Uh, body aches go away. You move to a different place in time. And rashes and your digestion seems to be realigned all over again. Um, uh, my legs don't, don't, don't hurt because you, uh, you, know, you got bad circulation. And you're aging long before your your time. You're aging way ahead of schedule, and there's no need to suffer through all that. And uh, this is Monday. If you can think through the week as a, you know little assignments, just unofficially, just just say I think I'm gonna get in my car and just go someplace different. Even if it's just a museum, because fall is a great time for going to museum, just to walk and just to look at beautiful things. Gift yourself that time. Because it's all about you and your growth. And no one else will give you um, that time but you. You have to allow it. And you should allow more things of beauty to enter into your mind. And um, to help you maintain a, a good mind and body connection. And also to preserve your health. And I want to leave you with that. I want to thank you for for listening to me still. And um, I will see you again soon. I got some exciting things coming up. I know I keep saying it, but it's coming. I promise. I want to give you a good night. Have a great week.